Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Outlaw Post Fight Podcast. See how we've rebranded there. You like that? Um, we're, so we've divided up. So today we are focused entirely on uh, UFC 271, which was awesome. Um, just before that, we'll just uh, give a quick shout out to our sponsors, Unbound Marino. We love Unbound. Nice beanie. This is my favorite hoodie. I love this thing. I wear it all the time. Um, make sure you check them out, unboundmarino.com. You can enter Outlaw at checkout. You'll get 15% off. And if you're in the US and you spend over $100, you'll get free shipping. So go on there. They're constantly adding new stuff. They've got a women's line coming out soon, which they're going to be sending some to V. So she'll be modeling that on the future podcasts. We <laughs> so love I'll it. stop stealing your stuff, Well, basically. you'll stop stealing my stuff, basically. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm down like a hoodie and a long sleeve T-shirt and a beanie at the moment. And that's just unbound. And Ollie was the first one to be stealing all of that. So, you know. Yeah. Anyway, make sure you check them out. And our other friends at Packed Coffee, which is delicious. I mean, honestly, I've just... Oh, <laughs> oh it's, it's so good. So uh, we actually had this this morning, didn't we, this coffee? Yeah. Um, make sure you check out these guys. So um, the best thing about Packed Coffee is that they buy directly from the farmers. So it cuts out a load of links in the supply chain, which means that the farmers of the coffee beans get a much greater portion of the profits. Um, packed coffee you can pause it anytime you can switch your plans you can change whatever you need to but it, it's it's great coffee delivered directly to your door so make a pack to make better coffee um, and they'll help you get started if you're uh, new to pack coffee you'll get one of these v60 coffee drippers which is a must uh, they make life a lot easier um, so go to packcoffee.com and that's p-a-c-t coffee.com um, create a flexible coffee subscription and enter the code outlawed with the, with the ed outlawed at checkout and you'll get the free brewing kit with your order um, speciality coffee directly through your letterbox um, it is awesome stuff isn't it we had this one this morning which is um, origin brazil dark roast gilberto basilio grown by that's who that's who the farmer was growing it and Gilberta, you've done a fantastic job, my friend. We thoroughly enjoyed that. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I'll look forward to that. In the morning. Oh, sorry, I've just knocked your uh, your little bear over. Sorry, hang on, let me put it on the floor. Okay. Make sure you check them out. Pack coffee and you'll get one of these. You'll need one of these because they are wonderful. Okay. Okay. 271? Yeah. What do you reckon? Did you enjoy it? I did. What I enjoyed the most is I got more correct than you oh okay did you okay yeah, so here yeah. we go so i've actually not <laughs> looked at the picks so you've sat and gone through and written all the picks down so of course you've got more than me because you've you know i demand a recount and all that <laughs> okay should we start at the bottom of the card okay so, so uh max grisham against william knight in in who who did i pick first of all wait um you picked william knight but okay. so did i Okay, okay. So in our defense, yeah. we didn't know he was going to come in 12 pounds overweight. Yeah, he didn't look that good. He did not look that good. And no. to say, what did he weigh in? Like 218? Yeah, he was 12 and, pounds overweight. And over. he's like complaining that they need a 225 weight class. Now, I'm not disagreeing that they need a 225 weight class, but he is 510. And, and after and, that, you just kind of like, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you kind of just put your head down and you're like, Ugh. 12 pounds is a lot. That's a I mean, lot. He did take it on short notice, didn't he? When, how short notice was it? I think it, it was remember? two weeks. Okay, so not that short notice. That's I mean, you can do some. Now. Yeah. So, okay, so the question is, how heavy was he when he took the fight? When he took the fight. And did he really think he was going to make weight? Mm, that's a good question. You know, did he really think he was going to make weight or was he like, eh, I'm probably going to be over, but he'll still accept it? Okay, yeah. So, how heavy do you think he was then? So he, so he weighed what? Was it two, 217, 218? 218, I think. Yeah. Okay. So he gets the pound allowance. So, okay. okay. So if he was 218 at weigh-in day, after he tried his hardest to make weight. Do you think he tried? Because Bisping <laughs> was saying that he didn't even try. Well, he maybe not tried, did he? What, what weight do you think he was when he got the call two weeks before? 260. You think he was 260? <laughs> Holy shit, really? Or like 250 something for Two, sure. 250 something. <laughs> 250 something. What do you reckon, Jamie? I'd say about 240. You reckon, yeah. Yeah, I reckon he was probably about, about 235. Okay, I think I got too I excited. He was, two, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like 347 pounds. I got too excited. <laughs> what do you reckon in the comments? Come on, come on, let us know. Let us know. I reckon well. he was about 235. 
We'll have to get us an interview set up on Vianne and you can ask him. <laughs> no, but like the reason I said that was because I heard one of the interviews that they had done with him before the fight, which was he was talking about it being 220 and how that should be a weight class. So he was speaking about this before. Right. But he said he like does get heavy and he just gets up to like the 260s. <laughs> oh, does so, he? Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. That's okay, why okay. it just came to mind. Okay. So, so, so there's evidence like, to back up your wild claims. Okay, was it that wild? <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't think know. so. I don't know the answer to the question. It's it's one of those frustrating things I can't Google. But you know, <laughs> it's it, it's still a it's still an interesting topic. I mean, the, so here's my thought on it. First of all, I don't mind the idea of having a division in the heavyweight division. Like you could put a cap at two thirty five, which would be really good, because then you've got a thirty pound weight class and then a thirty pound weight class. Right. Mm -hmm. And and you could even lift the limit to like 275 on, on heavyweight because there are some. I mean, Derek Lewis is cutting to make 265. <laughs> he used his pound I mean? hours. Yeah, he did. Of course he did. <laughs> and the rest. So like, <clears throat> I don't mind having a division there. But, but William Knight didn't look any better for being heavier. He looked slower. He looked more hesitant because he didn't look like he had the conditioning. And I don't know whether him just coming in at 218 and having a full training camp would have made a difference and he would have been different because he was carrying a lot of excess weight that he didn't really need to be carrying, Yeah, right? I so think that, that happens sometimes, though, when people <clears throat> talk about another division, that they don't um, use that time to like to change their bodies to fit that other division. They just kind of go, oh, I can eat more, right? W without making those small adjustments, which it's quite difficult to adjust your body to a different weight class if you're going to do it correctly. Mm -hmm. What he should do is he should move into Jared Cannonier's house. He should go and live with Jared Cannonier for for. Jared said, I think he was night. his like wife. They'd look like a pro wrestling team, wouldn't they? Can yeah. you imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I, I I think that he could be he could be a, a real dangerous force in this division if he just if he just kind of holds it together. It's the same as Gastelum at welterweight. Yeah, I still think that like welterweight Gastelum is like that mythical beast, like sea level cane, you know. He's like 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 Bron 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 Bronson, which is now blood bloody Bronson, according to Jared Cannonier, which was a nice line. Um, yeah, I I mean I like William Knight. I think he's I think he's interesting because he's short and stocky and powerful, and and I and I think that if he's if he is limited to two hundred five, he's gonna naturally come in in decent shape because he's got to do the conditioning to get his weight down. Yeah. Do you think losing a little bit of muscle mass might help him? Yeah, maybe. I don't know how he would lose it though. I mean, he would have to like he he looks like someone that like looks at a chicken breast and puts on two pounds of muscle. Yeah, absolutely, you know? absolutely. Like, like, don't, like if he does if he starts doing push ups, he's he's gonna be like he's already yeah yeah. 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 I, I I don't know. I don't know how difficult it would be for him to do that. But I, I certainly feel like he could he could get down any excess weight that is unnecessary, and in the process probably lose a bit of excess muscle mass that's mm -hmm. not serving him. I mean, it's not to make him any less powerful because he's he's ridiculously powerful. Yeah, like the, the, I still can't believe the height he got on that backflip. Did Did you see? But in the fight, I think he tried like a jumping knee, or he just grabbed the guy and just <laughs> went up so high. <laughs> it's ridiculous, like how athletic he looks when he's on his feet and doing sort of like acrobatic gymnast type of moves. Mm. Which, if you see like most gymnasts now, uh, in comparison to before, they're kind of like short and really stocky yeah. and really muscular because yeah. they can get such high altitude and do such complex flips. Uh huh. What did you think to Max Grisham? What'd you call him earlier? Tall Felder. Yeah, Tall <laughs> Felder. <laughs> I don't know because everyone says he looks like Paul Felder, which I thought too. But then in the commentary, I heard it was like everybody says that. So I was like, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll call him Tall Felder. <laughs> yeah. It's a good one. I just like that I got you to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a bit. I was. I was. Uh, he got that good like uh, head kick in the beginning. That yeah. was really nice because Knight was like pulling back quite a bit. With uh, don't tell me anything about the mic now. He just looked what? over as I no, pulled no, no, back. No, no. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I won't. I'm not gonna comment on you, Matrix, in a way from the mic. <laughs> no, but like I, I thought. I thought he did good and I thought he did pretty smart because it's a it's a really powerful guy that you know has come overweight. And you just don't want to take these chances. And usually when people take chances is when they get knocked out. So in the end, you you could always go, well, am I going to have an exciting fight or am I going to win? Like what, what does it really matter in the end? Because people will forget about mm -hmm. the exciting fight two fights down. 
Yeah. And then they'll just look at your record and make an ass- like assessment based on what they think of you as a fighter because of that. Mm-hmm. So if you if you take that into approach, I mean, he did pretty smart into just like pick him apart from the outside and and not really worry himself in making it anything else. Yeah, yeah. So we were both wrong on that one then. Yeah, but I, I will <laughs> say also for this, the, the picks podcast we did had a different order. And I don't know if they made this fight the first fight because... They, um, they moved him to punish him because yeah. he was... Yeah, uh, because he was, he was like further down. Yeah, but wasn't... Uh, didn't... What's his name? He was the seventh about being fight. being low on the card. I'm sure uh, uh, Alexander Hernandez was complaining yeah. about being on the prelims. So didn't they move it, move them up? Um, they must have had a little shuffle around, but they weren't. Yeah, they weren't first on the uh, on the card when we when we looked. I mean, he wasn't. It was like um, Alexander. Diamond, yeah, it? yeah, he Met- wasn't Met- even. Matata. Mike he didn't come Matata. out like that. He came out as Blood Diamond. As Blood Diamond. That's pretty cool. I didn't know you can come out to whatever you want. Oh yeah, just no just, rules. I'm just change my name. <laughs> 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 come out to like different names each time. <laughs> um. Okay, Jeremiah Wells against Blood Diamond. Yes. What do you reckon? Uh, I reckon I was right with that one, and you were wrong. <clears throat> yeah. Well, yeah, of course. Okay. But I, I was dreaming a bit. You know, I was hoping that uh, Blood Diamond was going to come in and, and be absolutely fantastic. And, and in fairness, he almost won by TKO before even fucking touching uh, yeah, Jeremiah was... <laughs> Wells. He almost took himself out on the fence. Like he did a hot, he did a quarter lap of the octagon and nearly TKO'd himself. And Blood Diamond ran at him in excitement, and then it was pretty much game over. Yeah, because lovely he got sequence clinched, against though. the fence, though. Like that little sequence that he uses against the fence, he runs around to one side and starts threatening one side to defend that, and then he, it's just it's combination punching in in wrestling up against the fence. It's really nice to watch. And someone who's only got three fights in MMA is not going to be able to keep up with that kind of attack. Yeah. I was impressed with uh, with Wells. Was this one of the um, things that you wrote down for us to do tomorrow? One of the wrestling sequences? What? No, this <clears throat> this is very similar to something that Jimmy does already with the guys. It's one of the sequences that, that they always run through, you know, tabling the legs and, you know, clock turn off the fence. And there's, there's, there's a lot of things that he does, which is very similar to that sequence. We, we have a few tweaks in our gym and there's a couple of things that we're going to add to it. But I, I think... I think what we're finding is that MMA is kind of finding its its system, mm-hmm. like it's becoming systemized naturally out of out of default. And if we look at the highest percentage stuff, the things that we see most, that is what that is what the core system is. It's the Glover to Shearer, you know. It's the basic basic game, and that's what Jeremiah Wells showed up against the fence and then taking the back. I was well impressed. <clears throat> what did you think about? Well, because he wasn't striking too much, and he was really going for that choke. What What did you think about that? Yeah, I, I mean, what I said as we were watching it, I was like, I would have liked him to... I, I wouldn't be thinking about the choke in this position. Mm-hmm. Like, he was in such a dominant position, and oftentimes he had one hand on the mat posted because Blood Diamond was in an awkward position underneath him. So, post one hand and hit with the other, and he would have most likely got a TKO in that position. I mean, of course he got the choke finish, but I think he could have... I think he could have got a TKO finish, especially because that's not a, a familiar position for, for Blood Diamond to be in. Yeah. You know? And and the referee was right there already. I think a few more hammer fists and, and heavy shots. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I was I well mean, impressed with him. I really was. You still like, like took him out. Out, <laughs> out. out. <laughs> yeah. Out, out, sleeping. Yeah. Yeah. There was a couple of eyes open submissions, weren't there? That's just so Once creepy. Sergey, the next one, he, he, was, uh, he was eyes open. Yeah, so should we move on to the next one? I mean, you just mentioned it. <laughs> Is that a good impression? Yeah. I don't good. know if the camera can see though, but yeah, I could. The camera can't see. <laughs> I was doing, I was, I was, I was doing the cross-eyed. So anyway, anyway, anyway. Um. So yeah. So we were, we were both. So you were right on that one. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Yes. Um. Bantam weight. Uh. Douglas Silva de Andrade or Douglas de Silva de Andrade, as Bruce kept calling him, against Sergey Morozov. Who yeah. had a banging first round oh, I thought, and opened up like a like an axe wound type cut on the side of his head. That elbow was disgusting. It was beautiful. The, 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 that whole first round was absolutely wild. And then, then the second round just kind of went the opposite direction, didn't it? 
I was really surprised because I thought when like Douglas came out, obviously I was surprised at how the fight turned out. But when Douglas started the second round, I didn't really feel like he was like, all right, you gave me your best and now I'm going to mess you up. He was kind of like, oh, shit. He like, yeah, yeah, he was a bit. He was like, oh. He's, he's better than I expected him to be. Yeah. And this cut's bad. <laughs> like That cut could have been a lot worse. If that was an inch over, they would have stopped mm-hmm. it in the corner. They did a good job of of stopping the bleeding because, like, if if you go back to the corner when when uh, how much he was moving around, like you must you've got to think how difficult it must be. You've got it's it's a sixty second break, so by the time you're in there and the the fighters sat down and you're working on them, you're probably fifteen seconds into that break, and then you've got maybe thirty seconds while they're fidgeting and moving and listening to different coaches and. Pouring water, pouring water all over themselves, something they never realize is not the right thing to do when you're bleeding. Like, the best thing to do in that moment is just stop, sit still, and let this motherfucker do his job because they do such a good job if you let them do it. Yeah. Right? All of it, all, all of them. They're all they're all good cut people. They and they, it's it's essential work that they do, and it can make a difference between the fight being stopped by a doctor in the second round or not. Like, sit still, don't pour water over yourself and just let them work on it. Let them fix it. Because what they're going to do is they're going to, they're gonna first of all, clean it up. Uh, sometimes they'll put adrenaline in it to, to stop the bleeding. And then they're going to, they're gonna um, well, I mean, what the cut man was doing on that, he was actually using the iron against it, the, the cold iron, which mm-hmm. would have been in the, in the ice bucket. So it would have been really cold and it would have just kind of, it would have contracted it all and slowed the bleeding down. And then he went straight across it with a with a a, 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 um, a bunch of grease. Like in boxing, they just go fucking handfuls of grease. Yeah. And like you'll see them come out the corner with big chunks of grease all over them. But in MMA, they can't do that because if you get you get a slip out of a guillotine and stuff with enough grease. Like that's why they check around the neck and the ears and stuff before they go in because people use the grease. Anyway, oh, that was a bit of a... <laughs> anyway, yeah. So, and, so yeah. So if you're a young fighter and you get cut, let the cut man work on you because they do such a good job just leave them to it but they did a good job of stopping that that was yeah. pretty bad yeah that, that was, was pretty that bad was awful um you also don't realize how incredible that iron thing feels <laughs> unless you're like you know yeah. back in your stool and they put that on like before the fight at any point you touch that against yourself and you're just like oh yeah that is horrible and rough but when that touches you and it's cold you're just like oh thank you yeah it's pretty good <laughs> this is the I, best I remember thing ever. Long, where was it it was i think it was on this side i'd been caught in a in a tie boxing match with a knee and i just had this big lump swelled up under my eye and it was kind of, it was like obstructing my eyesight a little bit. So uh, Owen Comrie was in my corner and he came in with the iron and he, and he put it on and he just, he just, he just pushed it. And he like, and it was the weirdest thing because it was like, he pushed it and all the swelling went around to the side of my head. Oh. And I just had this little knot here, just like a little hard fucking lump there. But all the swelling that was on top of it, he just pushed it and it was all kind of bunched up on the side of my face. It's like a phone screen. <laughs> You know when you put like you pushing the yeah. bubbles out of it. <laughs> <You're just> like... <laughs> That's just what it's like. Yeah, That's I exactly just know because like. I changed the, the screen on my phone like two oh, days right, ago, okay. so okay. that's why that came up. Yeah, it's it's a really odd feeling. Yeah. But like um, Hepworth did it the other day with his, uh, he got that lump on his shin, and I told him just to get a fifty pence piece and put it in the freezer, and then then drive the fifty pence piece into it, and it just kind of disperses the swelling. Anyway, welcome to Medical Hour on the, the, the Outlawed Post Fight Podcast. Don't we have to say, like, disclaimer, like, we're not doctors? We, no, I, no, we no. are not doctors. If you've not figured out that by the baseball cap that's on fucking backwards <laughs> and the amount of toys on the wall, then fucking hell. I, I do watch a lot of Dr. John... Hang on a minute. I should do a, an impression of Dr. John Campbell, which only a very small fraction of you will get. Or welcome to today's talk. I fucking love that bit of his videos. <laughs> welcome to today's talk i'm gonna start doing that in in, in the war room i think okay yeah it's just yeah. such a anyway Calming. we've gone off on the tangent that you yeah. won't be following dr john campbell he's an excellent uh an excellent content provider on youtube um anyway wait last thing on oh, douglas on. all right last one i will say that he did that body shot to overhook in the first round oh, quite a few beautiful. times before it actually landed like good in the second round yeah. like he was trying to set him up for it uh-huh. so yeah I mean, props to him. Uh-huh. And if you sprayed A him green in the first and time. put some big pointy ears on him, 
he would look like one of the gremlins after they've eaten him after midnight. He he, he would remember. He he's would, such a bully. I'm not I, honestly. He's got that kind of. He's got. He's got. He's like so fucking lean, isn't he? He's got like three percent body fat. Yeah. Oh, I think they they mentioned that he dropped like forty something pounds for like <laughs> one of his fights. You didn't recognize him since he's cut his mullet off, did no, you? No, I didn't. Yeah. I no, didn't even know good. that I was the same person. He looked really that, good. If you have that mullet, please don't do that. <laughs> just, Paul Felder had it once. Just don't. Paul Felder looked like a looked like an angry Leonard Skinner fan when when he had it. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on. Okay. Uh, so, hang on. Who did we have in that one? Did I pick Morozov? Yeah, we both did. We uh, both messed well, up. We were right in the first yeah, round. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Jacob Malkoon against AJ Dobson. I was well impressed with Jacob Malkoon. Did you pick Malkoon? I did. Oh, you did. I should have I should have known based on what he did to uh, Abdul Razak Al-Hassan. He did exactly the same yeah. thing. Another power puncher, and he drowned him with wrestling. What I tell you, the UFC keeps giving you the same problem yeah. in like a different person. Yeah. It's like Duolingo. But he solved, <laughs> but he solved that problem twice now. Yeah. So well, now, now they might give him a, like different. a different. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now he's gonna get fucking what's his name, Carlos Ulberg. There you go. Oh no, he's a light heavyweight to me. That doesn't make sense. Um. Anyway, I was impressed with him. I, I thought his pace was very good. I thought his 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 wrestling game was very good. I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Kelvin Gastelum. Yeah. I think that could be a banger. I know Gaston's matched up, isn't he? Yeah, with uh, Nasruddin Imav. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. That's a good one. But, you know, <clears throat> maybe in the future. I, ju- I was just impressed with Malkoon's wrestling game. <clears throat> you could see how frustrated Dobson was and how frustrated his corner team were that he wasn't getting back to his feet. You could hear Mark Coleman busting blood vessels in his eyeballs screaming. <laughs> okay, so you were right again and I was wrong again. Yeah, but I picked that based on his last performance, and I just thought he'll probably do the same here, which, I mean, he did. So, so you were right. Okay. So I was right. Ronnie Lawrence against Mana Martinez. That's another one that got, that got <clears throat> changed in order. Oh, did it? Yeah, because we had Carlos versus Fabio next. Oh, okay. But because, also, another fight got canceled. I think we should just mention it already. Alex Perez versus Matt Schnell. Oh, yeah. What was that? Two pounds? And he, yeah, and he two pounds decided over. he didn't want to take the fight? Yeah, that was What was his reason? Weird. I don't know. I just... I don't know. I just Instagram saw it. That he didn't, I didn't What's really two pounds? like... What is two pounds? Look into it. I mean... that's Yeah, it was weird. That was weird. Anyway, I don't, I don't know the details, so I can't comment. But I, yeah, weird. So Ronnie Lawrence then. Yes. Who had a really rough weight cut and got his salts all wrong. And on the on the uh, uh, um, and then uh, on the post fight interview, decided to announce that he had oh diarrhea. Like people, you don't think it, my so, family's watching this? Like people I know are watching this. The next time I see someone, they're just gonna. Maybe they need to know why his performance wasn't good. He's like, don't say now that. he doesn't need to tell everyone individually and say the word diarrhea over and over oh, again. You, you know what? He's like everybody. I'm sorry. I had diarrhea. It would have been a better performance. Unfortunately, my name is Ronnie Lawrence. I'm now going to start calling him Ronnie Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was really good. He was he was really good. But Mana, uh, Mana Martinez cracked him hard in that that third round. And you said this while we were watching it, which I'm so I'm just going to repeat exactly what you said. The times that. Uh, Martinez was knocked down against Ronnie Lawrence. They don't add up to the same knockdown that no. Martinez landed in the third. That was a much bigger shot. Well, it was also because of the way he was going backwards. He was kind of like, it was almost like something was behind him and, and he was yeah. falling. Well, that that was the thing that was nice about Lawrence's footwork. He's like, as he was attacking, he was, he was, he was moving towards his open side. So he was getting him onto his heels as he was knocking him off balance and knocking him, you know. Basically squaring him up before he was before he was striking him, but yeah, Martinez cracked him hard in that in that third round. Yeah, it was a hell of a fight. I I, I think Martinez looked a lot better as well since he's moved to uh, uh, Krause's gym. Like definitely, there's some improvements there. They've settled his game down a bit. Um, but I think Ronnie Lawrence is pretty good. And if he's if he's not had diarrhea <laughs> on, uh, on fight day, I think he's going to be lethal. I mean, he might be lethal if he's had diarrhea on fight day. Depends how lethal the diarrhea is. Oh, can you imagine if you would have like 
diarrheaed himself. <laughs> <laughs> like on the bike. Like he imagine... He wouldn't have been the first person to do it in the octagon. Yeah, though, I know. It? And I will say this to like the UFC people at like Halloween parties that dressed up as, you know, fighters that have diarrhea on themselves. Yeah. yeah. That's mean. That, That's not cool. So that, You shouldn't I, do that. That's so, messed up. So people at the, at the Performance Institute went as dressed as the fighter that shat themselves. Yes. As a fancy dress costume. Yes. Yeah, because when I was there, they had me... Is that because there's an abundance of dirty... Uh, but it wasn't like <laughs> one of them. It was like a lot of people dressed like... It was like four or five. I just kept looking at it and I'm like, bro, that's messed up, man. <laughs> what if that fighter like walks through the door? And they you? weren't there. Were they there? No, they weren't there. That's, that's probably why they did it then. Yeah, but still. Well, maybe like, she was. Maybe she, maybe she was. She. <laughs> you already gave well, it up. <laughs> maybe they came as themselves and she just blended in. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they came as themselves. Yeah, with, that was messed with up. With shitty UFC fans. Okay, anyway. I will say also, Martinez. Yeah. On that second round, he looked like he kind of gave up on himself a little bit on the first, but on the third one where he was like, you know what? I got this. <laughs> then he like he came up and I just wish he would have had a little bit more self-belief in himself yeah. in that second and first round. And like, yes, you had adversities. Yes, you got taken down, but like kind yeah. of. We saw that a bit there a couple of times. Like, what's his name? Well, the next fight on the card, uh, Charant against Ulberg. Like, Charant did almost nothing all the way through the fight. At the end of the first round, though, he uncorked a lovely, uh, was it left hand? And clipped yeah. uh, Ulberg and dropped him. Like, he, I, I can't even begin to imagine where he was at in his head. So did he drop him one time or two? Because DC had this debate with Bisping. Uh, well, let me check UFC stats and see what that says. <laughs> All right, but uh, stats and what happened? Technically, neither of them scored a knockdown. Oh. <laughs> See, I, I would say that punch just landed. It did clip him. I don't think mm. it was a particularly concussive blow, but like, he just didn't do anything, did he? I mean, l l so here we go. Significant strikes. Uh, Allberg threw 112 and landed 66, and Sharant threw 41 and landed 13. Yeah. Like, and and to, and to think that he's already lost two fights in the UFC. Like, I understand his hesitation, right? He got... Uh, Von Flew choked against Menafield and then he got knocked out bad by William Knight. I feel like he could almost got Von Flew choked in this fight. Yeah, well, he did put himself in that position a couple of times. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just maybe it was just too soon for him. Maybe maybe he needs to go away to a different organization. I mean, he, he is only six six and one. Oh no, that's Carlos. Hang on a minute. What's what's Charant's record? Where are we? Yeah, seven and four, and three and four and three of those four losses of the UFC. Maybe he needs to go back onto a local circuit and, and get four or five fights and then go back on the contender season or something. I don't know. He just didn't seem ready. But he has just moved to hard knocks, hasn't he? Yeah. So that's going to make a difference to his game. That will make him better. I just don't think he'd had time to, for it to settle. I wonder why he's called the water buffalo. I don't know. Have you seen water buffaloes? They're like... Massive. Thick. <laughs> I wouldn't want one of them coming at me, so... <clears throat> yeah, he, he landed two strikes in the last round yeah. when he really needed to go after it. Were you anyway, impressed that Carlos tried, like, takedowns? I was I was just generally impressed with Ulberg. I thought he was... A, he, he was much... Because I, I know he was getting a bit of criticism uh, in, the, uh, in the third round because they were saying, I mean, he was clearly winning and he... You know, he could have put his foot on the gas. He could have tried to get a finish. But he, he was coming off that horrible gassing against uh, uh, against Entegiqui, where he just had nothing to give after the first round. So, like, you've got to think, like, that's a recalculation in his mind. Like, he's coming off that fight. He threw 146 strikes in that fight against Entegiqui. Yeah. Gassed himself out completely. Got stopped in the second round. Then he comes into this one against Sharan, who's backed into a corner coming off two losses. He's clearly a power puncher because every time he lands, he looked like he moved um, Ulberg. Even and, when he like barely landed, like with yeah, that thing. just clipped yeah. him. But I thought I thought Ulberg's striking game was very good. His takedown was nice. I was impressed with him. I was impressed with him, and I, and I think that he had a he had a calmness and a confidence now because he's 
He's got over, uh, he's done over three rounds. What are you going to laugh at? <laughs> I was just know, laughing. Is it not about eyebrows? <laughs> no, you, it you wasn't. you got to fucking mention eyebrows no, at some point. No, it was the fact that Bisping at the beginning oh, mentioned on. the Bachelorette thing and he also <laughs> mentioned the show. So for the comments that I was a little bit dumb for watching the shows, first of all, I didn't watch the shows, okay? No, Bisping it's on had his the names weekly. of the shows. <laughs> yeah, well, Bisping, Bisping knew the names like of the shows. On it. He'd tell you the running duration of each episode. <laughs> Who made cameos in them? <laughs> what lovely Paisley shirt he was wearing in the second episode that Bisping just had to go out and buy one for himself. <laughs> yeah, I thought Alberg was good. I think he's a, a legit contender in this division. I think he's I think he's a very skilled and very dangerous fighter. And I hope that he's really building that that ground game up to to match it. Because we've only seen bits of it so far, but if if anybody fights him that's got any kind of wrestling the jiu-jitsu, they're going to use it against him, surely. Yeah. Surely. <clears throat> but do you think sometimes you can get away with not having a good wrestling defense if you have good wrestling offense? Like if you get the takedown first, then you're not fighting off your back or you're not doing anything because you like anticipated the move? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think sometimes. I mean, I think if you think back to when uh, GSP fought uh, Koscheck, like Koscheck was such a good wrestler that he kind of neglected his wrestling training to focus on striking and jiu-jitsu. Yeah. I mean, more striking than than jiu-jitsu. But then as soon as GSP started taking him down, he, his wrestling defense wasn't sharp. It took him by surprise. And then he was unfamiliar being on his back. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's another good option, especially because like some, like Jack Manson's like that. He's, he was a, he, he's got good striking, good ways, well, got awkward, but decent boxing, especially for Europe. But then his ground and pound was so much better. Like he, he added the wrestling to his game instead of working takedown defense and jujitsu. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. Interesting fight. Interesting fighter. Uh, I'll keep an eye on him. Still developing though, for sure. Okay. That's when we both got right. Do we both get right? Yeah, of mm-hmm. course we did. He's got perfect eyebrows. So, uh, Kyla Phillips against Marcelo Rojo. Rojo. Yeah. This was a, this was a, a clinic. Kyla Phillips is so, yeah. He was, fucking impressive wasn't he he is so He's fast impressive so fast so slick well-rounded come on then spin kicks all spin, the time spin kick, you but, fucking you <laughs> love a spin DC kick hated the spin kicks that his corner ended with <laughs> if you're gonna spin do a back kick and then you're like yeah believe that as the last thing in his mind so it lingers on yeah and then 20 seconds later he threw a spin back kick and he got clipped with two shots Okay, yeah, the point but were stands. they good? Well, no, it doesn't I, I matter. think okay. All right, so here's my thought. <laughs> okay, <laughs> do I prep myself? Brace for yourself. My <laughs> Here comes Veronica's thought. Okay, we need I like get... a jingle or something like a ding. <laughs> Sorry, carry on. Carry on. I, I get that. Like the simple strikes were the ones that landed, but sometimes the crazy strikes sets up for the like simple strikes. Like, yeah. McGregor throws a lot of those spin techs that I don't think are necessarily, like, great kicks. Uh-huh. But it sets him up for his left hand. Absolutely. So, <laughs> I feel like DC <laughs> should put some respect on spin kicks. I'm not denying. Look, if it, DC should respect spin kicks because it's like if it's not like got a the belt re- off Weidman <laughs> due to a terrible spin kick <laughs> decision, right? Yeah, but if if it's not like a, like a double leg or like... On the fence, DC doesn't like even say it's nice. Yeah, no, no. I, I think he, I think he could appreciate good striking. He just likes, he just likes logical, uh, competitive striking. Oh, is that that missing Lego piece that you threw on the floor earlier? No, that's your missing Lego piece that you threw on the floor. I don't, I don't do that. I, um, it was the eyeball that was on the floor. Eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> it was Bisping's eye. <laughs> <laughs> Are, you, are we gonna have to like beep that out? <laughs> I don't know. No, we'll just leave that. You can get in trouble for that one. You can take all the blame for that. We'll see what they say in the comments. Um, what were we talking about? Tyler no. Phillips being sick. Yes, sick. <laughs> sick. Yes. No, he was. He was very, very good. He was very good. He was just a lot quicker, a lot more well-rounded. He was very, very slick. Just like beating him to the punch like every uh-huh. single time. Uh-huh. And just look, and, and yeah. going back to your spinning kick thing, I don't mind a spinning kick. My point was, and you can go back and watch this because it was the third round, wasn't it? Right? He was two what? rounds up. 
It was winning. Yeah, but he was, was throwing was, spin was, kicks like throughout the whole thing. You can't count the one time that it didn't work out for him <laughs> and just be like, this is the statistics. Because then we're going to go into guillotines, which people say is the second best submission. But how many people fail it? No, listen, listen. Valid point. Valid point. Absolutely. But that's not the point I was going to make. The point I'm going to make is this. As you said, and you perfectly illustrated my point, but he's got spinning kicks all the time. Mm -hmm. So the last thing his corner team needs to do at the start of the third round, when he's already two rounds up, <laughs> I think it was is the to second go... Round. No, it wasn't. It was. Just, I'm sure it was the start of the third round. It was we'll the go... second Could... as well. well. Okay, so they fucked up twice then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they didn't. Uh, look, they know their fighter better than me. It's just... <laughs> I, I, all I'm saying is, right, Kyler Phillips throws spinning attacks. Yeah. That's part of his game. Mm -hmm. So as he's leaving his stool, give him something logical and foundational to think about. Because you know he's going to throw some spinning shit. Tell him to double up his jab. Tell him to throw more feints. Tell him to set up his takedowns. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, instead of going, back kick... And then the round starts, and t literally 20 seconds later, you can see him going, back kick, back kick, back kick, back kick, back kick, back kick. Like, honestly, like when someone's fatigued, they're easily programmed yeah. and influenced like that. That's I all I'm like saying. I feel like the last 10 seconds are the only time that you really get, like, the stuff that sticks. Because at the beginning, you sit down, you're like, oh, I got to breathe, okay. Then the coach is talking, but you're more like, can you give me the water and give me some breathing space? Yeah. <laughs> like, honestly, like that last that last 10 seconds as you get off your stool is that's the, the thing that's going to be echoing in your subconscious as the next round starts. Right? Give them something basic and foundational <laughs> to think about. Spin. No, he said, if you're going no, to no, no. make yeah, it. No. I'm, I'm, I'm playing up, obviously, of course. You you are correct. He said if you were going to spin, throw spinning back kicks, which is the correct thing because a hook kick would have got him closed down. Mm -hmm. My point was it was just you don't need to influence him to throw spinning attacks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah absolutely. It would have been... It, it's, it's just it could like have been a risky thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, could have, he could have got caught bad with that because I knew as soon as he said it, within the next 30 seconds, he yeah. was going to try it. So what did you think about the submission? Because he got that triangle arm bar. He was like uh, on oh, yeah, top, like lovely. with S mount. He went to triangle, and then Marcelo kind of like slipped out, but yeah. slipped into an arm bar. Uh -huh. The thing, well, it, the the start of the sequence was where he, when he went for that Kimura, yes, and used it to set up his mount. Mm -hmm. So he went Kimura to mount, and then straight to it, jumped into an S mount triangle, didn't he? Yes, beautiful, really, really nice. But like again, you know, his his flow state striking is is the same as his grappling. Like didn't he start? Didn't he start at Gracie Barrow when he was three? I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure he did, he did like Taekwondo sure, as well. I'm sure they said he started. He, he was Gracie Barrow when he was three or something like that. Very, very slick. Very slick. I mean, he's only young as well, isn't he? Really yeah. young. This Loads is kind of, of like a tangent or, or like off topic. But if you started jujitsu at like three and you're competing as a blue belt to people who have been doing jujitsu for like a year and a half. That's kind of like cheating. Who's competing as a blue belt? No, no, I'm just saying in general. That was off oh. topic, but <laughs> <laughs> shit talking. Someone, you know who you are. I don't know who you are, but you know who you are. Sandbaggers. But like, even in Brazil, you have these like, oh yeah, he's a blue belt. He's beating up this black belt. Okay, that's been training for like ten years. That's yeah. why it was unfair for Jimmy Warlet to be walking around with a brown belt around his waist. Yeah, that's just strangling messed strangling black belts left, right, and center. And he did it strangling like, on them purpose. with their own black belt. <laughs> just for fun okay moving on uh did we both say kyla phillips right no i said kyla phillips oh i said rojo just to make you feel bad i did see jamie's nodding he knows <laughs> yeah yeah i, I like did feel I, bad. I did feel bad yeah. for, for saying kyla phillips so it was a good fucking thing that kyla phillips won otherwise you if you'd have picked against him and then he'd have won rojo to be to be honest if i was rojo i probably would never speak to me again yeah yeah. Do you think he picks against himself? No. <laughs> well, I don't know. I feel like he entered the fight like like all the fights. Like I'm here to fight and I yeah. don't care what's going to happen. This is going to be a war. Yeah. And that sometimes just derails you a little bit from like from the game plan, which is uh, like we were talking about earlier with uh, well, it's, it's the next fight. Yeah, the, Roxanne. The, yeah, was it Din Thomas that was talking about it when they when they brought him in and uh, they were talking about the fact that you know when a fighter steps into a fight and they 
they've already accepted that it's their last fight and they're retiring that they don't necessarily go about it in the most calculated of ways and they're more they're more inclined just to kind of have a memorable fight instead of win yeah and like Roxanne didn't really try for any takedowns until she did and she was successful Mm -hmm. and of course you know Casey stuffed a couple but she Roxanne, won. yeah, Roxanne was still, you know, yeah. like if you, you'd have thought if she wanted to come in and win this fight and go out on a win, yeah. instead of instead of show people that her striking's improving because her striking did look better, but I think she could have been far more challenging had she wrestled a bit more. Yeah, we kind of just jumped to the next fight. I know so we did. Next I fight, because I, you were I, right, because I picked Rojo, and, and I was wrong. <clears throat> um, but you picked Mother Fairy. I did. Well, you well, one of the judges agreed with you. Yeah, I just felt like, but if Mata Ferry would have done the thing that she did in in the end of the second round, which mm-hmm. is like set up a takedown, go and then control on the ground, I felt like she could have won. I don't know why she approached it. Like you said, maybe it was her last, like because it was her last fight, she could have approached it like that. But I feel if Roxanne would have fought, like she fought Macy Barber mm-hmm. or or mm-hmm. any other up and comers that. She was able to be that she could have beat Casey yeah. O'Neill. Yeah, yeah, she, yeah. I, I mean, it, it kind of. I, I don't want to jump or I don't don't want to jump ahead. But it's like it's like the main event, like Whitaker. Like we talked about it, you know, before. Like if he's got to play his cards right, and he kind of didn't play his cards right. Mm-hmm. You know, he did good things. He could have done better things, and he could have made better decisions at different times of the fight. And Roxanne could have done the same thing, but it matters a lot less for Roxanne. So I don't think it. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, but you still, if you win, you get paid like double. Yeah, that's true. So I feel like that's that true. should matter a little bit. Like it's the last time you're gonna get a big paycheck. Maybe she's killing it on OnlyFans. <laughs> like maybe she, maybe she's OnlyFans? selling used anime wigs and stuff, and people are buying them. You know what? I, that wouldn't, su- that wouldn't surprise me at all. Some, that's not was, even like. There were some weird conversations going on at the gym this morning about guys getting emails from people asking to shave them and stuff there's some to fucking, shave them. honestly there's some fucking weirdos out there especially because the the feral little monsters that we've got at our gym like yeah, whoever would bad. want to fucking shave them for some kind of sexual gratification i don't know but there's I've a market out there for that. everything i've never heard i want to shave you there is a market out there for, that's why i always wear socks because i know there's one that was a weirdo out there that wants to look at my beautiful feet <laughs> I've got feet like a like a hobbit. <laughs> Honestly, I've kicked so many people in the face with them that they're just kind of deformed over time. <laughs> How do we descend to this? Oh yeah, Mother Fairy's only fans. Listen, <laughs> she doesn't. Okay, well, I think we should I make it clear it, that I look, don't think she has only fans. You don't know that. I don't know that, but I mean, she hasn't advertised it, so it's fair to say that she doesn't. Yeah, maybe she makes a killing when she goes to like Comic Con. I'd imagine she'd she'd go down really well at Comic Con. Do you know what I mean? She'd be like, like her and MVP queen. on the on the on the thing signing together. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Got Pokemon is that Comic Con? It's all all of that stuff. Yeah, all like, that shit. Pokemon. There. You have Izzy to... <laughs> doing this, and then you have I don't know what MVP? which one she does. MVP does all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, the Pokemon one. Well. That's what I was talking about. I don't know. I don't know. It's like gotta catch know. them all or something. I don't know. <laughs> So were you impressed with Casey O'Neill? Um not really. <laughs> well, not 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 because I didn't not, think not. that she was good, but it was just when she stepped into the fight, it was everyone was like, Oh, this is the greatest prospect that 125 has, and she comes in and she finishes girls and and it was just like a really big hype around her for for Mata Ferry to like hold her ground in the striking department, which wasn't really where yeah, she's she, even good at. Yeah, she you know? busted her up pretty quickly, didn't she? And and she still like gave her like busted up her eye, like gave her like a bleedy nose and and it wasn't with very like technical strikes. I feel like yeah, she, she could have gone mm. so where did something she go a little from bit here, more though? impressive. Because like so at the moment, and obviously the rankings will be updated, but Casey O'Neill was at fifteen and Roxanne was at number twelve. Twelve, yes. So does she jump Manon Furo and Macy Barber and get num- get to number twelve? And in which case, who does she get next? Because above her is Alexa Grasso, Cynthia Calvio, Jessica I, uh, uh, Andrea Lee. You know which one would be like good is that Manon Fi- Furo. Furo, that French girl. Yeah, yeah. yeah she has tough. really st- got good judo as well. Yeah. Oh, mm. well, French. That's it. Automatic. Great automatic. Judo. Automatic. 
automatic. You're born with a judo black belt if you're born in France. I mean, they did do a really good job. At it's in the school system, it being, isn't it? I don't know, but yeah, I think it is. They were the ones that fought for MMA not to be legal in France. Of course, they did because they're fucking afraid. It's a mafia. That's in why they France. took. That's why they took out leg locks because the sambo guys were coming in and rolling them over. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, Arlovsky. Arlovsky. I love to see Arlovsky get a win. Even if it is a split decision win, he looks so slick. He's like I don't think it should have been a split around. though. I no, think, I, like, no, I don't think so. He but then, decisively beat him. Well, this was the summit that, that Anik was talking about on the um, uh, Anik was talking about it on the broadcast. Is that Vander actually outlanded him? <laughs> yeah, but who's counting these strikes? Well, I mean, some a is. lot of the ones that I saw were to the air. So, but th- but that's the thing. I mean, he he. So okay. Let me just go over the, the, the strikes. So okay. total strikes, Orlovsky threw 140 and Van der Rohe threw 190. Orlovsky landed 71 and Van der Rohe landed 102. Right, so he was, land- he was outlanded by 31 there. Of significant strikes, he was outlanded by six. But Van der Rohe threw a considerable amount more as well. It's, I don't know. I mean, it's like that. that's the thing. That's where stats don't really lean into it because I thought Orlovsky was just ruling the day mm-hmm. like his footwork he was stinging he was he was paint brushing him with his one hand he was paint brushing him with his other coming over the top with the right he was waxing on he was waxing <laughs> off he looked good he looks uh, i mean it's you know i'm just i'm always impressed with Arlovsky, especially when you know you, you know the ufc are giving him some monster that can most likely you know wreck half the division like he had a few like if you look he, he fought like um, Tanabosa was a was a, a a horrible a horrible tough fight for him, and he just cruised it. He looked great. Same thing with Carlos Felipe and, and Chase Sherman. He could have got drawn into a war with those guys, yeah. And he didn't. He, he looked smart. He looked sharp. I'm a big Andrei Arlovsky fan. I've got a figure. Where is it? Here he is. That's how much of a fan I am of him. He <laughs> and takes he's pride the of big place. Figure. There you go. He takes pride of place. And the YouTube the YouTube plaque is off at the side somewhere. Uh-huh. Make way for Andrei Arlovsky above the Space Marine. So who would you have him fight next? I mean, he's well, on a three-fight win streak now. Yeah, but where he's not, he's not back in the heavyweight rankings, is he? Oh, unless he gets added on. Well, let's have a look who's at the bottom of the top 15. Sergey. Yeah, I mean, well, so, so Walt Harris. You, you, could, you could see him. I mean, I, I'd, I wouldn't mind seeing him fight Pavlovich. I don't think what I don't I don't need to see what Harris fight again. I just don't ever feel like he wants to be in there. Now. I won't mind seeing him fight Ivanov because Blago Ivanov is one of those fighters that's got wins on uh, wins over people that you wouldn't think, and he's got losses to people that he's taken to a like a really hard fought decision. He's a real tough test for anybody. He's also the one that's got that stab wound right in the middle of his chest. Which was like the, I can't remember they said in the commentary it was something like oh yeah no it's act, like if got into a bar fight or something nah that's like a surgical precision fucking assassination like someone's tried to put that man away I am telling you like like you don't get you don't get stabbed casually in a fight like directly into the into the solar plexus like that like that's like that's like a that that was a hit for sure. <laughs> Honestly, you have got to okay, look so, at this scar. So, it's so what like, do you think really happened? I think he got. Uh, yeah, I think I think he, I think someone tried like, to paid to kill him. Yeah, I reckon he's a badass. Kill him. I reckon he's like a he's like a mafia heavyweight something like that. I reckon he's the guy that they send him in, and start snapping fingers and taking people's teeth out. Uh, oh, that'd be cool. He's got a he's got a darkness about him. Yeah, he does. I just I just saw his picture as you mentioned him on uh because I have the UFC rankings up and right. I pulled up his picture and I was like, oh, that dude's scary. Yeah, and he's fighting it. He's fighting in the heavyweight division and he's like undersized and underweight. And he, he, I mean, he's, he's just he's a scary dude. Ranked number 13, 18 and four. Yeah, Ivanov. That'd be a great fight. That'd be a great fight. Orlovsky against Ivanov. Yeah, that's the pick. That's the pick. Okay. I picked Olovsky in that one, didn't I? Yeah, but I did too. Oh, fucking hell. I re- are there I, any, are we there... already know that I won, though, because that's the first thing I mentioned. Of course it is. And I'll be hearing about it all day tomorrow as well. That's Until my, that's the my next Valentine's time. Valentine's Day gift is you're going to remind me of it every five minutes. <laughs> time of the Valum. <laughs> time of the Valum. <laughs> okay, main card time. Yeah. Bobby Green looked like... I've never seen him before. Yeah, we both messed up on messed that up. one. Messed up. Like, Hack Paras was just there to be hit the whole time. 
And Bobby Green was hands down. He was popping his jab. He was slick jab as well. So it was like slick. doubling it up. I, I think it was like three one time where he just went around him and threw all the jabs that was going through the guard. I think a lot of this with, um, oh, what was it a name that I had called him? Nasparat. Na- Nasparat. <laughs> just kind of joined it. Just yeah. So Nasparat was like <laughs> thinking that he had big gloves on. I think yeah. during the fight. Yeah, because he was kind of just bit. going. He was like this, and the punches were kind of just coming through. Yeah, and wasn't adjusting to the fact that it was going all through his guard. Mm. Because he, he Bob, wasn't doing anything to get his head off the center line, really. Nah. Yeah. It, it was good. Like it was good movement, and it was good block. But like you said, I if he was like, wearing sixteens, it'd have been yeah. fine. If he'd have had sixteen ounce gloves on, he would have he would have blocked the majority of them. But like Green was like. He, and especially because he was coming down from his waist as well. And he's like coming up into that gap. So he's not going into the front forearms. He's like stinging it up through the guard. It's harder to see as well, especially yeah. if you have a, a high up guard. Yeah. I, fi- I find it sometimes when you're like fully guarded, it's harder to see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, that's what Canelo leans on. That's what Jimmy and I were talking about the other day. Like Canelo throws that that right hand and he throws it over the shoulder because when people in, in boxing, when they're covering with their gloves, as soon as the hand passes this kind of point, they can't see anything anyway. So that feint goes, flares all the way off to the side before he digs that left hook in. And uh, like, I just, just, there's just a lot that changes with the with the small gloves. And I, I think Bobby Green's style, his defense is very slick. Like his reaction time's great, slipping and moving and rolling off the center line. Even the shots that he was taking, they weren't hurt, hitting him hard. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because he was like rolling like was, with it. Yeah, I was well impressed with him. I I, I massively underestimated him. I, I I cornered against him once, and he was just kind of a he was he was kind of a ragged mess of a fighter. And the guy that I was cornering, Toby, should have beaten him, but Toby was just a mess of a of a of a, of a like a he couldn't stick to a game plan, and that was the big problem. And uh, Bobby Green was just he just caught him clean. He was just you know slick slick fighter. But he's improved so much, and he's found this. He's found a rhythm now where I feel like he could be. I think John Anik said it. He could be a, a main event fighter. Like you could see him. What is he? Twenty nine and twelve. You know, he's tw- ten knockouts. Well, the whole <sighs> crowd were cheering. Was cheering mm. for him. They were all yelling, "Bobby!" Yeah, I would say. I think he's gonna get in trouble with the UFC with that. Uh, all the cursing he did after. Yeah, what did he say? I don't remember. He said like. Yeah. Yeah, check that out. So I cornered against him in 2008. Okay, so I think that's your bad for not <laughs> oh, updating. <laughs> what? No, so he was like so, I underestimated him because I cornered against him in 2008. All no, right. no, 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 no. I'm just no, just generally like I, I, I always think at some point his his style is gonna come unstuck. Okay. Like against someone that that can push forward and 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 hit him and catch him and, and throw combinations together, mm-hmm. and someone that can get their head moving a bit, you know, like like they they're the people that he struggles with because then he then he doesn't feel confident in his own offense. Yeah. Because Hack Press kind of stood there waiting to be hit, he was cruising and he looked better and better. I feel like if you would, if you would have ended with uh, low kicks as well, that that would have mm. improved the outcome of the fight because. When he was coming forward, especially with strikes, he would go back a lot, but his feet, so like his head would go back, but his feet would stay mm-hmm. kind of where they are or move very little. Mm-hmm. So if you just go to straight like Dutch kickboxing, that's what they do. They're always end end a combination with a low kick yep. at all times. And that could have slowed him down and helped with the speed disadvantage that he had during the fight. Yeah, yeah. Check that out. So that fight back in 2008. It was on TFA 11, and the name of the show was Pounding at the Pyramid. That that sounds a little wrong. It does sound a little wrong. <laughs> that, does, that does sound a little wrong. <laughs> if I remember right, at that event, because the California Commission have always got some interesting people working for them. <laughs> if I remember right at that event, they brought in a new rule recently where you can't, you couldn't... Uh, drink or eat anything in the changing rooms nothing aside from bottled water dc and was not gonna fight in there no. <laughs> if he can't eat a turkey leg on the fucking warm-up mats holy <laughs> shit how would he say that the second like, round of the he, first he's fight. definitely on commission for that place he was like plugging them by like name he was like oh yeah no it's uh this is four, six, seven, the Vine avenue you gotta check it out it's dc's chicken wings or whatever it was 
<laughs> turkey Fucking, leg. That was turkey legs. That was it. Um, yeah. So I, I remember being backstage at that, that, that event and I'd just finished the training session. I'd come over to corner and I got a protein drink mixed up and I was like, I'd driven there. I was late. I was like hustling to get there. And I just, I shook up this protein drink and opened the top to pop it and went to take a drink. And this fucking California commissioner literally grabbed it out of my hand like it was a fucking explosive. It was like, it was like if they didn't get their hands on it immediately, it was going to kill us all. It was ridiculous. And I'm like, I was just about to take a drink and, it, and they literally, they fucking spilled it. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? They're like, you can't drink that in here. I'm like could have just told me you could have just said i'm like okay i'll go and stand outside the door like it makes a fucking difference okay but were you close to like no 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 i was i was dehydrated and ready for some nourishment anyway that's a that's a side note let's move on shall we yeah moicano did you pick moicano okay uh, why the attitude because we both did oh okay so so w- were there any were there any fights where i picked one and you picked? oh no there was because we're gonna get to Two. It in a minute okay Okay, good. Yeah, did, we, I think we already passed. We, we should we should have been videoing us watching the coma. Yeah, event. no, but we we already passed them. <laughs> anyway, carry oh, on. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, we'll talk about what oh, happened we, oh, we, with oh, the coma. We're, we're moving on, are we? No, no, we're talking about Moicano because that was a slick performance. That was, and the back take was just like, I was like butter, <laughs> <laughs> butter, as in like. Like the deity? I don't know. Like, you know, people oh, say butter. S- smooth like butter. Oh, right. Smooth like butter. <laughs> like smooth. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> You're distracting me. I'm not. Yeah, by making fun I'm of me. I'm translating for the people. How was what I said wrong? Because I didn't say it in, a, in the Queen's accent. <laughs> so, as you were saying, Moicano. Yes. Slick. Slick. Like butter like butter lovely rare naked choke it was the night of the rare naked chokes we had one triangle arm bar but and right after alex was kind of complaining about not being higher up on the card i don't feel like that yeah. was a... i don't think he did it i don't know if he did it before or after i just know that he did complain no it was about... be, yeah it was before i, I remember was reading, before yeah, i remember reading yeah. it before but I, I mean you know I, I was surprised that they weren't higher up especially with it being moicano he was super slick yeah, I've, I've, like, I've just got this concern that because uh, 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 Hernandez has um, has got very awkward striking. He's very quick, um, and I just felt like he might he might you know clip Moicano with something. It was making me a bit nervous. Moicano seems a bit slower at this weight class for me. I was very impressed with him. Yeah. Did we both pick Moicano though? Yeah, we both picked him. I feel like sometimes uh, Alex, when he throws his punches, his stance gets really really wide he's mm. almost in in this like this like split type of position like if there was like a paper under him he would mm-hmm. definitely do a split <laughs> you know <Yeah. laughs> you know it wasn't talking cowboy about? attacking his legs i feel like cowboy really attacked his legs heavily yeah. i'd have to rewatch it, that cowboy fight, was right. the reason that i picked moicano for this fight right because I, I just thought um like alex does really well unless it's somebody who's has really smart experience fight iq that that can make it into a more like it's kind of like, like the old man at a boxing gym you know yeah, yeah. and you like underestimate him because you're like the cocky young guy yeah and then he just like outskills you uh-huh. and i feel like that happens with alex hernandez whenever he faces somebody who who has just experience and and skill to to back it up yeah that can nullify all his strength agreed so you picked Derek Brunson, did you? Um, no, I picked Candonier, <sighs> but you did too. I know, I know. I just like to be right when you're not. Yeah, but that happened in the beginning where I was right and you weren't, which is with Blood Diamond and with Jacob Malkoon. Yes, but now it's gonna now it's gonna flip at the co-main event, so I'm <sighs> gonna be celebrating in a second. So okay, Jared, Jared Candonier look, looked. Very, very sharp, very strong. As soon as he start, as soon as he, he he defended a few Derek Brunson takedowns, and even when he was taken down, like it was almost effortless getting back to his feet. Yeah. It was it. He literally looked like a heavyweight with a middleweight trying to hold him down. Yeah, like he just strong, confident, comfortable out of both stances. Wicked variety of striking as well. And I'm not a big fan of Derek Brunson's style. Really. 
just not a big fan of his style, no. I've told you that before, right? I feel like I've I mentioned th- that before. I think maybe you might have mentioned did that. I, I felt, did I? I must have said something on the last podcast about it. About yeah. the fact that I'm not really much of a fan of his style, about it being a bit kind of... <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's the part people had a screenshot. Mm. That was it. Mm-hmm. Mm, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was still that version of himself. And it's the same thing with the Adesanya fight. As soon as he fails takedowns and he doesn't feel like he has that safety net, it's he, he gets Ronnie Lawrence and he starts to panic. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He starts to shit his pants a little bit. So Cannoneer against uh, Adesanya then? Is it too soon for him? Can he do anything? Because my concern is that Whitaker kind of toyed with him a bit. And he did beat Whitaker's yeah. leg up, but he didn't look himself in that fight. And I don't, I mean, that maybe have just been a bad, a bad, ex, a bad performance for him. That might not be a good example because he did look really good against Jack Hermanson. But then Adesanya is just not going to give him any, he's not going to give him any gaps, is he? He's not yeah, gonna give him any... I feel like he, Adesanya doesn't really mind by beating you and not, the most impressive way he just yeah. wants to win the fight and if that means you know outpointing you then he's happy to do it and he's not going to get drawn into people's opinions on what he should be or how he should fight mm. in in order to change that which i think helps keep him the champion mm. as well but what did you think about um the almost rear naked choke by brunson in the first round i do you think he almost had it no i don't no, no i don't i i think of course, it looked like it was it was threatening, but if you'd have added a minute to the clock, Cannoneer would have made more of an effort to escape, knowing full well that he was within the last 10 seconds of the fight. He just waited there because he knew he was safe. Mm-hmm. And even if it was sunk in deep, he could have held his breath. It, I, I don't think it was. I don't think it was a, a threat to him. I just think I, I think Cannoneer was just physically too strong for Derek Brunson in in, in every range. And I think I think coupled with the with the speed and the pre- and the power of his striking, like those those elbows on the floor. I mean, it was like literally two shots, and Brunson was you know on standby. Yeah, that it, that took a while for that. Like you could clearly see that he was out, and they even <laughs> threw the towel in as well. That is one thing I will say about Kerry Kerry Hatley. He's got to get himself in between the fighters. Like, wh- yeah, like on if that you're last the referee, one, he was kind of like, oh, as long yeah. as I don't get hit. Yeah. <laughs> stop, stop! Hey, hey yeah. stop! stop. It's like, t- like trying to break up a fight between two lions. It's just like <laughs> just let <laughs> stick in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get your knee in there. Get your body in there. I remember punching Mark Goddard accidentally once. You know, I was hitting someone and he was diving in to stop the fight, and I punched him in the leg, gave him a dead leg. <laughs> did <laughs> he curse at you? Of course he did. Yeah. In fact, I've got the video of him coming over to me right after the fight had been stopped, and he went, "You punched me in the fucking leg," <laughs> as you know he would. I know because I there is on Fight Pass him cursing. <laughs> of course, get the fuck out! Get the fuck out! <laughs> that's my favorite thing that's happened in all of MMA this uh, this year. In fact, Jamie, I'll send you the clip, and you can just drop it in here so people can experience it. Oh, I'm sure Mark will love you for that. <laughs> Uh, I did do him a solid though in the breakdown show. I left in his his uh, excellent treatment of Rob Whitaker at the end of the first round in the first fight, where Whitaker was down and he stood and he watched him, giving the giving the Sherlock Holmes look as he walked back to his corner, making sure he was all right. Excellent protocol, love it. Yeah. Okay, so can we, can we talk about the back fist for the win? Bam, that was bam. slick. That was slick. Yeah. Yeah, we can start drilling that. <laughs> so we talk about the coming event now. Okay. Oh, this one. <clears throat> because this one we were watching me. this. We were watching this, right? <clears throat> and I woke up this morning and looked at the results immediately because... Not like last time where you at least waited and... I know, but, you know, I needed to know. I needed to know. Yeah. Because, I mean, we do we do sometimes watch the fights live, but given the fact that the, the amateurs are sparring in, in the gym at 8 a.m., um, I would be death as I'm bouncing around the cage filming them so yeah anyway so i ch- I woke up this morning and i checked the results so i knew that uh that taito avaso had won and so many people laughed at me when i made that pick they're like <laughs> he's gonna knock out the knockout king anyway so as we're watching it all the way through i know what's going to happen here and you picked Derek lewis and you still were convinced that Derek lewis was winning the fight and was going to win the fight as we went into the second round you were like Wait till Taito. Okay, wait, but 
I didn't check the results. Okay, I didn't cheat like you did. It's so not cheating. That's a fair advantage of whatever I say before the fight. You'd already made the pick. It makes no difference whether I know the result or not. No, I yeah, can just but sit comfortably the fact here that you while knew... you gloat every time Derek Lewis lands a shot and you go... <laughs> and you just kept like a straight face like well, yeah. oh yeah yeah mm -hmm. that okay that was mm -hmm. cynical mm -hmm. not okay not cool you could have just you know said something like if somebody has their fly like down what? don't or be like... so excited <laughs> don't get too excited <laughs> don't count your motherfucking chickens don't count your fucking turkey legs before they've hatched so I had not checked the results and also accidentally opened up Instagram and saw Derek Lewis so for some reason in my head I'm like oh he won for sure then but I didn't read anything because I was like oh no make sure you don't see anything <laughs> so it's more exciting for me right so this was the only fight that I had seen something of it and I was just for sure that okay well at least I got this one right <sighs> yeah it was a hell of a fight it was a great fight I don't know how Taito Vasa like <laughs> Hook it, though. I'm telling you, those shots that he was taking as he was getting up from the fence. I said, like, Taito Avassa is going to be able to take these shots. He fucking took clear clubbing shots as he got up. And as he stood, he went, <laughs> and then and swung turned, back at him. Yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. What a legend. Oh, and he's smarter than people give him credit for. He plays up the party boy thing, but he's a thinking fighter. He's a yeah. smart dude. I'm telling you. Yeah. He's got he's got these boys figured out. He did the right thing, tying him up in the first round, holding him against the fence. Hold it, hold it, hold it. <laughs> but, hold him okay. against the fence. Lewis did get some sick takedowns. I was impressed with that. You look at that trip. The whole crowd. I yeah. mean, normally, if you get a takedown, people don't really care. Mm. But the fact that Derek Lewis got one, yeah. everyone lost it. He does need to stop fighting in Houston, though, doesn't he? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Maybe Houston's I remember thinking that on when I was fighting in Nottingham. I remember walking out and looking at the arena and thinking to myself, oh, shit. Because I, I go watch Nottingham Panthers there. Yes. I'm going like, to have flashbacks of a bad night every time I go into this arena. Okay, so when. would you have not gone back into a oh, Panthers no, game? No, 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 no. Would it have no. not affected you that no, much? No, no. I feel like I would have never gone into that. I that shit too much. Anytime I would have looked at the arena, I would have like cursed at it. It's only sport. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. We love it, though. Anyway... Main event, Epic okay. Whitsky Dinter. Yes. Fuck. So, hold yourself. Well, Verdict's MMA also picked Whitsky in my defense. Yeah, but... <laughs> Carry on. No, nothing. I just won. That's it. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> I mean, it. Like, well, anyway, show, thanks for joining us. With... <laughs> <laughs> drop the mic. I was right. You were right. Yeah, you were. It was a, it was a really odd fight. Like... I know a lot of people, like, I saw uh, Chandler being critical of Adesanya. I saw Gaethje say that but, Whitaker won three, four, and five. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't think Whitaker won two of the rounds. I would have to watch it again, but I, I feel like Adesanya comfortably won four of the rounds. Yeah, I feel that as well right? when I saw it. Whitaker did look comfortable. Once, but, yeah, I know yeah. we've only watched it one time. Whitaker just didn't look comfortable in the mm -hmm. fight, not at any point. I did like the fact that he was very calm. And I do like the fact that at the start of the first round, he was looking far more to counter-strike, which forced Izzy to come to him. But then he wasn't persistent enough with his wrestling. And I don't know whether that was a confidence thing or a conditioning thing, because he was able to expose Izzy's back twice. Yeah. Like, I still, I keep I keep saying, if, if, if somebody keeps wrestling him before he closes this gap, they're going to expose his back. I think somebody's going to do it. And, and I think Izzy can learn a lot in this process and I think he's he's I think he's he's fortunate that there there isn't a Damian Meyer style fighter in this top five bracket. Well you know? who's that? Like Jacques the guy Ray, that... Yeah, well Andre Muniz is a bit a bit of a way down yet. But I could definitely see him being a problem, especially because he knows for sure he doesn't want to strike. Like a lot of these guys that that Izzy's uh, uh Izzy's fighting and it's the same with uh, with Cannoneer. Cannoneer's gonna want to strike with him because that's that's what he does. And you look down the middleweight division, so you, like, uh, Whitaker's predominantly a striker, Vittori's predominantly a striker, but he tried to grapple and it didn't work out very well for him, but he's not he's not got a particularly complex grappling game. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's a very basic grappling game that Vittori's got. 
Cannonier won't try and grapple with him. Brunson tries to take him down, but he's reckless in his takedown attempts. Paolo Costa didn't bother. Strickland won't bother. Like you, you start looking further down the division. There's no, there's nobody in this division that's like a, like a, a like dominant a wrestler. Like no, yeah, there yeah. isn't. There is none. That none of those fighters in this division right now. Not in the top fifteen anyway. But the one fighter that keeps sticking out in my mind is Andre Muniz. Like he's ranked number thirteen at the moment, but I, I don't know. I just feel like he's, for sure, he doesn't want to strike. But he's a big dude anyway. He's not going to be undersized by comparison. He's going to definitely want to try and close Adesanya down. He's going to keep trying to take him down until he gets him down. And if he's if he scrambles and takes his back in the process, he'll snap an arm as he slides off. Yeah. I th- I think he's a really interesting test. And I think, but then at the same time, I think Adesanya's got enough time fighting the strikers that are coming up in the division to build his grappling game up to be able to deal. So it's it's an interesting time for the middleweight division, you know. And then you've got Alex Pereira, who's coming up, who's a great striker, who obviously is. Yeah, but I don't know. think, I I I know he beat him, and maybe if this was just a kickboxing match, maybe Pereira would win again, especially because he only just quit kickboxing. Mm-hmm. But he hasn't been doing the takedown defense. He hasn't been fighting in the UFC as long, and he hasn't been facing these guys for as long. And and. I think in his last fight, you could see where that part was still a little bit green in him. That mm-hmm. was still a little bit exposed, which, I mean, was exposed when Izzy fought um, Vittori the first time in the third round. That's why uh, Vittori kept saying, like, you know, he might have won the fight. It was a split decision, but, I mean, I don't personally agree. Mm. But, yeah, he just hasn't gone through that yet. Just like uh, Blood Diamond in the beginning of the card and just like Carlos that they do have this kickboxing pedigree, but they haven't faced these things in a fight where they can learn because you can do it in a gym, but it's kind of when you're in competition that you truly understand Mm. where, you know, the pressure is and what you need to do and adapt to to people coming at you for force and not somebody who knows you as much as people in the gym do because mm-hmm. you also yeah. know you know your sparring partners and training partners so you kind of understand these paths that they go through and you can kind of lie to yourself like oh i'm in this level higher and it's maybe it's not that you're that level but it's the fact that you know their patterns mm. yeah and and it's different as well when it's you know it's the first time you've locked up with somebody. You you might not be sweaty yet. You might be dry. Like the the fence feels different. The canvas feels different. You know, not normally when people are training, they're wearing shirts and spats and mm-hmm. you know other pads as well. Like it, you feel very naked in there with just a pair of shorts and a and those and, tiny and, gloves. Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, like it, the, I mean that's why Blood Diamond I think looked a bit out of his depth. Is it is. You know, it's a different environment to a kickboxing arena. I, I do think Alex Pereira is in the right place, though. He's got Glover to share with him. Yeah. And I think that's going to be, you know, a, a, a quick path to, like, good basics. Yeah. I was pretty happy when he moved out of um, work because he was in, I think, uh, Campina, Sao Paulo. So it's on the outside of Sao Paulo where they do have a really great wrestling team. Mm-hmm. But for f- mostly females there, a lot of the Brazilian national team train, train just... uh something dos campos Mm. um but where he was at he just there was just nothing around and he would bring in some people to hold pads for him but i mean i didn't really think those people even matched his actual level of kickboxing right so i'm i'm pretty happy that he moved over to uh to global to share and and also that they can feed off each other because they're if they share knowledge like both of them they could both grow Mm. But it depends on how that really goes. Yeah. Is it just Glover sharing? Is it just Alex teaching? Are they both respectful of each other's, mm. you know, strengths? You got to think Pereira would be a good person to be a sparring partner, to have as a sparring partner if Glover's fighting Rakic mm-hmm. or um, that Yuri. Yeah, Prohoshka. Yeah. Yeah, which he is. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good shout. Yeah, I mean that's a good sparring partner for him. Anyway, we've kind of we've kind of digressed. Um, anything stand out about Adesanya's game? Anything that you were really impressed with? Anything that uh, that surprised you about any of it? I mean, I wouldn't say anything like surprised me. I think Izzy fought like Izzy, mm. which which is impressive. You know, like his feints are impressive, his movements impressive. 
Um, I feel like he he tried to do a lot of those like lean back shots. His low kicks are mm. always pretty hard. Um, he did look a lot stronger as well in this fight. Like, yeah, he did say physically, that. Yeah. Physically stronger. So, How do you think he deals with Cannonier? Um, do you, well, first of all, do you think he beats Cannonier? Of course you do. You're not going to pick against Izzy. No, I think Izzy might. Might beat him. Yeah. Yeah. I think so too. If if Candonier's in the right mindset, I think he can do it. Mm. But um it might it might be a little bit too much star line in this thing. And Izzy doesn't mind, like I said, making the fight like I'll pick you apart from 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 the outskirts. Yeah, which is kind of what Whitaker did to Cannonier as well. Yeah. yeah. And you have to think like Izzy's better at that game and also longer mm-hmm. and more experienced, so so next question, who do you want Whitaker to fight next? Hmm. Vittori, uh, we don't want to see him fight Brunson again. Vittori, Costa, Strickland, Hermanson. Well, I'd like to just see him fight Strickland so you could knock him out. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, a, be a good fight. That'd be a good <laughs> fight. I wouldn't mind seeing. I just want to see him punch Strickland. I wouldn't mind seeing that fight. I, I wouldn't mind seeing Whitaker against uh, Vittori. I think that'd be a good fight. Yes. I think yes. that'd be a real fun one. Especially because you know what you're getting with Vittori and Whitaker's consistently good. You know, yeah. even when he has a rough night like he did last night, I think he's still he's still good enough to beat uh, beat Vittori. That'd be a good one. That's kind of like like the established three then mm. that keeps repeating. Yeah, the ones I'm watching out for in the middleweight division are a bit lower down now. Like Imavov's got a good a good opportunity against Gastelum. That is a good opportunity. I think Strickland's probably going to get one of the fight and then he's going to be up in the in the top of the division. But then I don't know if Strickland's got the striking to deal with someone like Adesanya. I think he can be effective against a lot of these guys. Like he could be a real pain in the ass for someone like Paolo Costa. Yeah. You know, he could be a real pain in the ass for Marvin Vittori. That might be a good a good fight. Do they not train together though? Yeah, um I think I saw them yeah, both they at do, don't uh, they? Black House. Yeah, I'd like to see those sparring sessions. I bet they're I bet they're pay per view worthy. Yeah. Well Marvin Vittori is just tough in those fights. Yeah. In in those sparrings, like doesn't he doesn't care about weight class, does anything, and everybody admits that he's like What the tough. fuck, bro? <laughs> I read my balls. I was right about balls. <laughs> 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 yeah they'd be good sparring sessions to watch yeah all right should we wrap it there yes yeah wonderful well make sure you check out unbound merino uh you can enter the code outlaw at checkout you'll get 15 percent off and if you spend over a hundred dollars you will get uh, free shipping in the u.s as well make sure you check them out all great quality stuff uh sweatshirts t-shirts beanies socks socks the socks are amazing. You've got to, you've got to check them out. Don't and even also, have to wash them. Don't like you have to you? wash them. Don't have <laughs> to like wash weeks, them. I wouldn't dare months? wash them because that's the point where you steal my clothes. As soon as they, <laughs> as soon as they go into the laundry and they've been washed, they just disappear out of there. They're like, where have my merino socks gone? Yeah, <laughs> I figured you out. And um, make sure you check out Packed Coffee. Um, uh, PackedCoffee.com. P-A-C-T Coffee.com. Um, there's a flexible coffee subscription. They're waiting for you. Enter the code outlawed at checkout and you'll get one of these V60 brewing kits, which you will absolutely need to speed up your morning coffee making. Um, and they're, they're fantastic. They've they've taken out a lot of the links within the, the supply chain and they are paying the farmers directly for their beans. So it is better than fair trade. Um, it's, it's excellent. And the beans are fantastic. We've been drinking packed coffee for the past couple of weeks now. Can't recommend it enough. Delicious. Pack Coffee, P A C T, coffee.com. We've been Outlawed Post Fight Podcast, and she's been Veronica Macedo. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.